Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays With Cars. Today I'm going to be changing the battery in the Astra because, well, it stopped working. Um, if you just want to jump to the part where I'm changing the battery, you can have a look at the, um, the chapters in the, in the, uh, on the YouTube video. But I'm going to run through a little bit of what's, what's happened to it first and why we discovered the, what happened to the battery and, and the symptoms we've seen as well. So if you're not interested in that, feel free to skip over it. But, um, well, so it started off with, or moved the, uh, the Astra out of the, out into, out of the driveway because I wanted to clean the SLK, so I needed a bit more space available for that. And it drove absolutely fine. Drove it the whole sort of 10, 15 metres to get it out onto the road and left it there for a couple of days. Then on Monday, it wouldn't start. Um, so we've done a little bit, of, a little bit of looking at it. I charged it up completely from a, um, from an, an ex, from a mains charge, just, just in case there was sort of, just in case it had gone a bit flat, something had been left on perhaps. So when you put the key in and turn the ignition on, the radio comes on as you'd, as you'd expect. Turn that down a little bit. Um, and everything, everything lights up more or less as it should. But when you actually try and start it, yeah, it's, it's just not having any of it. The battery is clearly dead. I've, I've, t I've done a few tests with it. I've charged it back up again completely. The battery is getting up to a good sort of almost 13 volts. So it's taking a charge, but it's just not delivering the current required. So that seems to be a sign of a, dead, a very dead battery. I am a little bit surprised by it though, because normally in the past when I've had batteries in cars fail, it's been a sort of a gradual thing. You've, you've had trouble, the car's had trouble starting, you've charged the battery up and it's been okay for a few days, but then you start to have problems again. Whereas this one, it's gone from being absolutely fine to just, just won't start at all in, um, it seems like it, it almost instantly between, uh, between, the, between the Saturday driving it out of the drive and the Monday of trying to start it again. But it's clearly a dead battery, so I've ordered a new one, charged it up over, over, over the, over, overnight to get it to full because batteries tend to be shipped about 50% 50 charged. So let's get on with fitting it. First thing, let's open the bonnet. The first thing that strikes me about this car is just how much space there is under here. It's, um, it's, only, it's got the 1.6 litre engine, so it's, I think, probably one of the smaller ones in the range. Um, and so there's lots and lots of extra space around here for basically for a bigger engine to go in there. But here we go, here's the battery. It's a 60 amp hour, 438 amp battery. So the one I've got as a replacement is 60 amp hour, so same capacity, but it's got a higher current rating. So it should, be, it should allow the car to start a bit more um, a bit more quickly and easily and cleanly. So underneath here we've got the, um, the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Easy, easy access to both of those. And I believe this should, yes, this whole part come, lifts up like that. And that gives us access to all of the connectors underneath. So replacing this is going to be a case of taking, disconnecting these from the uh, positive connector across here. Um, disconnecting the negative terminal, negative connector, that's going to be really easy. Taking off this bar that's holding the battery in and then also this clip here. And I think this clip is probably going to be the hardest part and I don't expect that to be difficult at all. So, let's get cracking. The two connectors for the battery terminals are 10mm uh, bolts, so we'll use a socket set here to uh, loosen that off. Uh, how much is that? I don't want to actually take the nuts off if I can help it, because that'll just be an extra thing to, to worry about and lose and, and so on. But, Oh yeah, you're supposed to take the negative one off first, so let's do that. It's the rule of thumb when you're working with a car, always disconnect the me me negative ba uh, battery terminal first, then you can start faffing around with everything else. Now that's, that's loosened off, but it won't come off because of all of these bits and pieces, the gubbins here held onto the top of the battery. So let's have a look at, let's have a go at those. Those are all 13 mil sockets, I believe. Uh, 13 mil nuts, sorry. Yep. So let's see how many of these I need to take off. Looks like it's going to be all of them, because in order to get this, this piece off, I need to take this one off, because it's on top. In order to take that off, I need to take this off. So I think I'm going to need to dismantle the whole thing, which is a shame. One trick, always put the nuts somewhere safe. I've had a, um, an ice cube tray is ideal for this sort of thing because it gives you lots and lots of separate compartments you can put drop things like that into and they're fairly secure so you're probably not going to lose the the items from them unless you knock the whole thing over and they're really cheap so 
an ice cube, yes, an ice cube tray is ideal for working on a, working on almost anything where you're going to be taking lots of bolts and screws and things off. Right, so now that's removed, I can take, I can't take that off yet, I need to take the, um, uh, the bar across the top off as well. Is that another 10 mil? Yes, it is. At least there's only two sizes of nuts in here. It's going to take a while. This is a... Okay, and now once, once that nut's removed, this comes off easily like so. And then I can take this wire out, and then this, I think, is this a fuse? Yeah, 32 volt, 32 amp, no, 32 volt, Oh, 275 amp fuse, that'll be for the starter motor then. And this other piece of metal that's just there to join all of these together and carry the current across. I'll take this off as well, because I'll need that in the new battery. And then this positive terminal block can be removed, I think, by sticking a screwdriver in, yeah, stick a screwdriver in there and in there, and you just lever out, and that undoes the clips on either side of it. And you can sort of just then kind of pull this out of the way. Okay, that means there's a, one piece left holding it in now, that's this piece here which is a, um, a large clamp to stop the battery sliding around. And I guess this means that if you had a larger or smaller battery, if you had a larger battery, you could put it in further, you could have the battery come down further along here and with the clamp sticking out a bit further. So down here, I gather there's a, a clip that you can sort of push in like that. And then this just lifts out. Now, helpfully, whoever fitted this battery has broken the handle off it. So it's gonna be a little bit awkward to get out, but I think I should be able to lift it anyway. So grab that, lift the battery out, and then put the new one in. Get it in exactly where the old one was. Hopefully it's exactly the same size and this will be really, really easy. And this one has a handle on it to make things even easier. And from here, it's simply a case of doing everything I just did before in reverse order. So put this clip back, clamp back in, slides in like so to hold the battery in place. And then if you reach around underneath, you can just push the metal lug back into place to lock it in. That'll hold that in. Then it was this piece, snaps back into place like like take that off. Put that away. Like so, is that and that's locked back into place now. Then it's the um, connectors. So we put the battery terminal post in first, like so. Then we have that one going across there, like that, and then the fuse across here, like so. And the three 13 mil nuts to hold everything in place. Tighten that one up, and then finally this one. There we go. Three. Now I can pull that off. Get the 10 mil back out again. Tighten this up. Right, that's secure. Then have the bar that goes across the top, hold the battery in, hold the battery down, stops it going anywhere. I feel like this is quite well secured. The last car I did this sort of thing on, it was just, there was there was a bar going across the top and two of these connectors going onto the battery posts, but none of the rest of it. So this is a bit more complicated, but nothing too difficult. go. Of course I missed a bit. This is supposed to have gone on here before I put that nut on, so that's a fail.
So I've put the starter motor cable, uh, wire back on, tighten that down. And we can put the cover back on there now. Well, here it is. down like that and finally yes I believe that's everything put this back onto here sparks slightly but that's to be expected because we just powered the car back up again and then finally tighten this back up again so we've got a good earth connection Okay, I believe that's everything connected back up again. So over here we've got the um, 12 volts onto the battery, through the uh, connectors here into the starter motor line. Put that connect. We'll put this back on. Put this trim back on again. Connected the 0 volts back up again. Got the um, battery clamp there and there to hold the battery in place so it can't move. So now I think it's time to find out if the car will start. Okay, it's time for the moment of truth. Key in, ignition on. Right, we have power. We have radio, that's good. Let's see if we also have, also have engine. We do just about. Hmm, that didn't start as easily as I would have liked. Here, ignition on, radio kicks in, that's good, everything's lit up. The car is complaining that the bonnet's open, but that's okay because the bonnet is open. Let's see what happens if we try and start it. That's much better, that's very happy. Now, the car is complaining that it wants me to open and close the windows. So I think that's a sort of, because I took the battery out, it needs to recalibrate what open and close means. And I need to do the passenger window as well. Do the other side as well. There we go. Recalibrated. <laughs> so it seems to be seems to be all, all be correct now. So I guess I'll take it for a quick run to um, to make sure everything seems to be working. But it sounds pretty promising. So, there we go, battery's changed, car has started, car is working. I'm just letting it idle a little bit to sort of, to recharge the battery a, a little bit after all those starts and restarts. Although with a brand new battery, I don't really expect that to be a concern. That was a pretty easy job. It took probably less than half an hour to do. Um, there were only a couple of things I had to think about while I was doing it. Generally, I'd say that was pretty straightforward. So if you're thinking about changing the battery on one of these cars, I'd say, yeah, go for it. Well, the only, the only tools you need are a, a, a socket set with a 13mm uh, socket, a 10mm socket, and a screwdriver for doing a little bit of poking at things. Oh, and I suppose a new battery as well. So, thank you for watching. I'll be back with more car stuff in, at some point in the future. There's still a few jobs I want to do on the SLK. But until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.